Hello. This is a short demonstration of VisM used to control two permanent magnet synchronous motors using sensorless field oriented control techniques. VisSim has a bundle called Embedded Controls Developer and it includes the core VisSim simulation and block diagram engine coupled with the C code generator, C2000 target support for the Texas Instruments digital controls chip series and the Texas Instruments digital motor control block set. It also includes a fixed point block set and TI Code Composer Studio plugins. The fixed point blocks allow you to think in floating point terms as a programmer and yet it will generate efficient scaled integer fixed point code. This embedded controls developer supports the entire TIC2000 line, including the 280X series, Piccolo, the F282 and F283 series, Delfino, and the 2808 and 2801, down to 2801 series. VISM supports all the on-chip peripherals, including the ADC conversion unit and its variants, which do change between the Piccolo and the Delfino, the enhanced PW PWM unit, including the high-resolution uh, picosecond edge positioning option, the enhanced uh, CAN controller area network module, the quadrature encoder pulse uh, uh, reader peripheral, event capture, the UART uh, serial port engine, SPY, GPIO, I squared C, general interrupts, and the watchdog. The UART, the SPY, and the I squared C support the hardware FIFO unit and also provide a complete uh, interrupt um, user selectable buffer length for all of the serial I.O. that you might want to do. So in a sense, VisSim is offering you an RTOS with completely written device handlers that you can query easily through the block diagram interface. And in addition, there's an optional VisSim Motion electric motor simulation block set add-on that consists of high fidelity simulations of AC induction, brushless DC, permanent magnet synchronous motors, and stepper motors. For this particular demonstration, we'll be showing digital control of sensorless, field-oriented, controlled permanent magnet synchronous motors. And what we'll do is control two of them on a TI low-end, low-cost piccolo part rated at 60 megahertz. The ADC unit will be used to measure A and B phase currents synchronized to the PWM waveform. A Clark transform will project the A and B phase currents onto the ID and IQ axis. And then PIDs will be used to maintain the PARC D at zero and the PARC Q at a torque level set by an outer speed PID loop. The inverse PARC will be used to feed a third harmonic space vector waveform generator that then controls the PWM signal per phase. All of this for both motors will run at 10 kilohertz, giving a 55% utilization of the 60 megahertz TI Piccolo part. The resulting program down on the target will use 6.4K flash and 1.4K of RAM, and this includes four 200 word debug buffers that are going to allow us to acquire any waveform we need for debugging purposes into RAM at the full control rate of 10 kilohertz down on the target. In addition, we will have a preemptible background task running at 100 hertz to let us do housekeeping things like uh, using a timer to maintain the open loop spin up time 
before we switch to sensorless mode because, of course, what we're relying upon is the back EMF uh, that we sense from the rotating magnet rotor. And at startup time, the, the rotor's not moving, so there is no back EMF. So that's a chicken and egg that's solved by spinning the motor up in open loop mode and then switching to sensorless once the motor's up and running. And we also blink a few LEDs. So let's take a quick look now at our source code diagram. What we're going to have here is two diagrams, source code and debug diagram. In the source code, you're going to lay out the blocks exactly as you need to run down on the target. I drilled down into the overall controller, and here you can see the two motor controllers there, and then here is our debug section. And finally up here is our 100 hertz tasks. Again, I left click to get to the top layer and right click to get down and drill down to another layer. If I hold down the control key and right click on the 100 hertz task block, I see what the properties are for that block. And it's what we call a compound block that in turn can contain any other set of ISM blocks. But all blocks inside here will be constrained to run at this local step of 0.01. And if we choose code gen as separate thread, then all the tasks down inside there will run in a background thread that is preempted by our main control loop. Here in the debug section, we see the monitor buffers being written to. There are 200 word buffers, all four of them. And we see a trigger that's going to start acquisition into the buffer. And then we see the various signals that we're going to look at. So this is sliding mode observer 1, sliding mode observer 2. That's the theta angle that our sliding mode observer estimator uh, tells us where the rotor is. And then we see the phase currents for motor 2, both I and IA and IB. This rising edge logic comes from the uh, diagrams, toolbox, fixed point. You see we have a whole variety of fixed point tools that we can use that are pre-constructed BISM submodels to do things like uh, three phase variable sign frequency, simple counters up and down, falling or rising edge detection, numerical integration, one shots, uh, PI control, PID, ramps, uh, resettable counters, uh, resettable min max, time of day, toggle state, triangle waveform generation, and variable frequency ramps. And these all come with the embedded controls uh, product when you buy it. If we drill down into one of the motor controllers, here we see the block diagram of the motor control system itself. So if we start here with the ADC unit, we can see we're looking at channel 0 and 1. And on the TI part, these blocks will result in a value of between 0 and 1. And we want to justify them or, or condition them to produce a bipolar value. So we're essentially subtracting a half and then shifting left to multiply by 2. We do that in both cases. That's run through the Clark transform. And here you can see uh, the VizSim logic for the Clark transform. Then there's a Park transform. And that's where the... These are variables here. The park D and the park Q are used here as the PID references uh, against the commands of ID ref, which is set to zero, and the uh, Q reference, which is going to be set by our speed controller in the outer loop. Then our inverse park is used to feed the space vector waveform generator from the TI uh, digital control block set. And it results in values between plus minus 1. Those need to be scaled to 0 to 1. And then those are fed into the uh, TI PWM configuration block that VizSim provides. And if you right-click any of those blocks, you get the configuration di dialog. And you can see 
here that we could choose a high-res timer if we wanted using the patented TI picosecond edge positioning. We can choose our period. We can do rate scaling if we want to run at a slower rate than the 60 megahertz system clock. We can synchronize uh, the counter based on a phase register that can give us a, an exact phase relationship between multiple units. In this case, we're not using that. We can also put a synchronization output pulse to the next PWM unit. We can control when our compare registers are loaded. And by the way, these two inputs, A and B, um, will be assigned to the compare A and compare B register as a fraction of our period. So if we come in with a value of 1, the duty cycle for A, the compare register value for A, is going to be equal to the period itself. And a value of 50% or 0.5 rather would result in a compare register value of one half of the timer period as set here. So you just set the period here and then use uh, simple uh, numerical fractions as the input to the block. This action qualifier lets you set up the resulting output waveform. So there's two compare registers A and B and two outputs A and B. So this is a bit of a matrix here where the compare register A on an up or down count match allows us to uh, on an event by event basis, so these events across the top are zero match of our counter, an up match of compare A register, down match of compare A register, up match of compare B register, down match of compare B register, and period match. X means don't care, zero sets a zero value on the PWM, one sets an one value in the output of the PWM and T will toggle. So in this case you can see the output A is uh, zero on an up match and one on a down match of compare A register and the B output is zero on an up match of compare B and one on a down match of compare B. In this case we have a MOSFET um, inverter so we don't need any dead band. So the dead band unit is disabled but it can be fully disabled and set up for IGBTs if that's what you're using or anything else that might require a dead band. This is an important section here that lets us synchronize our ADC conversion pulse to uh, the PWM itself. So in this case we're going to send a conversion pulse and then in the ADC unit we will actually uh, set up the ADC unit to convert based on the occurrence of this pulse. So we're sending out an A pulse and a B pulse, both when the counter is equal to the period. So uh, this is the source code. And once you have the source code in place, well, we can take a quick look at our 100 hertz task. Here's a, just a simple pulse. Um, on an, a GPIO, which is going to cause an LED to blink for 10 milliseconds, and for 90 milliseconds it'll be off. Don't forget we're running at 100 hertz down here. So the pulse is high just for one step, but time steps down here are a, um, 10 milliseconds. Here is the motor mode inputs. If I right click and we bang out again, we see there's four inputs to the system. Motor mode 1, speed command 1, mode 2, and speed command 2. These are global variables. And we can see that they're referenced down in this subsystem. And what we're doing here is to see if both motor modes are greater than zero. And if so, that sends a true value to a digital output that is wired on our inverter board to an enable of the inverter output. So if either motor is disabled, then no motor will spin, given this current logic. The other thing that checks for is a rising edge showing the motor mode has changed and a counter starts to run. And if the counter is um, reached 100, which would be one second, 
because we are running at 100 hertz. And in the motor mode 2 case, we're equal to 2, which is uh, sensorless mode. So the modes are 0 is off, 1 is open loop, 2 is uh, sensorless. Then we enable the sensorless mode variable, which is referenced in the diagram itself under the motor controller. So the sensorless mode tells us whether for theta we're using the ramp, and which would be used in open loop mode, or if sensorless mode is true, then we use the theta sliding mode observer that's calculated from our sliding mode observer block. If you right click, you can set up the sliding mode observer position estimator to the values used by your motor. So that's uh, stator resistance, stator inductance, the uh, time step of 10 kilohertz in this case, the base voltage, uh, base current, and then two constants, one for the sliding mode observer and one KSLF. Now if we double click, we can go inside and see exactly how our sliding mode observer is working. We also take into account the DC bus voltage and the actual voltage is being applied to each phase. And in this way, the sliding mode observer filter, it takes in the actual measured phase currents and the voltages we're writing, and based on the difference, it teases out where the rotor must be based on what must be a back EMF. So anything different from what we're writing must be due to the rotation of the rotor in with the coils. So to compile this to run down on the target, we select Tools, Code Gen, and in this case, for debugging purposes, we will include the VISM communication interface. We want to minimize our RAM usage because we're not doing any fancy uh, numerical integration. It's just pure digital control. And on this particular part, the uh, Piccolo 28035, there is not a lot of RAM. And we would, for simplicity, like to include our code, our data, and our debug buffers all in RAM. Of course, we could target the flash, but then we'd have to go through the step of burning flash by bringing up Code Composer. And uh, when you're prototyping, it's just uh, handy to avoid that step if you can. And the VISM code generator is so efficient that it lets us put everything in RAM for debug purposes and prototyping purposes. Of course, when you get to the stage where you do want to deliver a uh, working component, you will be targeting flash. So we choose a stack and a heap, and I've chosen values here that I've obtained by prior running and uh, looking at um, probing the actual heap and stack usage and, and taking those values and put them back in here. So initially, you will uh, choose rather large values for those, then probe and see what you're actually using, and then you can be more efficient and cut back. So we hit the Compile button, and here in this window, we see that we generated the code. We're running it through the TIC compiler. Then we run it through the linker, and here we've created our PIMSIM 2 motor 28035.out file. Had there been any errors here for any reason, we could look at that and verify and... Uh, send those into support if we had any issues. Sometimes you will see there that uh, there's insufficient RAM, say. Um, your your um, use of data structures or the code you generate is so large it may not fit into the pure RAM model and then you realize you have to target flash and relink. So that's uh, a look at the source code itself and showed you how to compile and download. Now what we need is the debug diagram, which I've already loaded up. And by convention, it's the same name as the source code with a dash D on the end. And it gives you the same connectivity, but now we've replaced the compound block that contained the source code with a DSP interface block that contains the out file that we just generated. That out file, when we hit the green go button, will be downloaded to the target 
and as it runs it will expect four inputs from the PC, provide four outputs to the PC, and monitor buffer read blocks will be able to read those debug buffers that we talked about earlier that contain 200 words apiece and those will be plotted as uh, digital scope blocks. Let's set our motors to run in sensorless mode, both of them. So what will happen after we start up, we'll have a, we have a 0.25, that's quarter of maximum speed uh, uh, speed command for both motors. And when we hit the go button, which I have just done, we get the hourglass because the program is now being downloaded and we're using the TI um, inverter board, the experimenter kit, and it comes with an onboard emulator, the XDS100, which is rather slow, but it's free. It comes with a board, so that's what we're using here. And it does take a bit of time to download, and uh, now it's downloaded. Our motors are spinning. In fact, what I'll do, uh, oh, and at first it came up in censored mode, in open loop mode, and now we're running in sensorless mode. And what we're seeing is the two motors, their sliding mode observer position one in red, and the uh, position one is synchronized, and it's the trigger for all our acquisitions, so it will not move. Motor two is not uh, the acquisition is not synchronized, so you can see it drifts a little bit, even though the speed command is the same. And then in green and red, we're seeing the phase currents for motor two. So if we give motor two a higher command, we see in blue The wavelength is quite a bit shorter, and we can see an increase in the IA and IB currents. And just to let you hear the motor spin, I will now put the microphone on near the motor, and you'll hear a little piece of tape uh, hitting the microphone, and I will cut the motor speed down so you can hear it change speed with the command from the PC. So that is a good example of uh, permanent magnet synchronous control. I'm going to hit the stop button right now. And as soon as we hit the stop button, it puts the, you have an option to let the target run or put the target into a reset mode, which puts the PWMs into a high impedance and shuts them off. And in this particular case, you can see that we are not keeping the DSP running. So as soon as I hit the stop button, the motor comes to a stop. Uh, getting back to our slideshow here, the debugging interface, which I just showed you, uh, shows the motor speed settable via sliders. The motor mode is set via buttons. And any other parameter, like PID gains or the sliding mode observer constants, can also be set interactively from the PC. And you have a choice of seeing single data point updates over the a JTAG emulator, which tend to be slower at about 100 hertz rate, or you can get digital scope updates that are acquired down on the target into a buffer, and then once the buffer is filled, the entire buffer is shipped back to VISIM for plotting in a digital scope. And we also were, sh were plotting the calculated speed versus the commanded speed. VISIM is also used for 
uh, controlling digital power applications like DC-DC buck converters. And the benefits of using ECD are the automatic code generation resulting in uh, fewer errors at code gen time, no hand code required, and you can debug its model-based debugging so you're actually at a high level able to simulate and remove any sort of uh, fixed point overflow issues or logic errors before you ever go to code generation. Also the built-in peripheral code generation uh, gives you a much quicker time to market and fewer de design iterations. The JTAG hotlink interface uh, lets you interactively change values down at the target and read results. And the self-documenting nature of block diagrams make your intellectual property easier to get going the first time and then easier to reuse in later projects. The TI Digital Motor Control Library was tested and optimized by TI and available in VISIM as an easy to use block set. Uh, VISIM has a user block API that's uh, generically available. It's published and documented and you can write your own blocks in that if you like. Uh, the simulation mode is also supported by the motor control block so that you can simulate your motor controller against actual uh, motor models and do your entire control simulation against virtual motors. And the motor control library supports both simulation and code generation. So in conclusion, VizSim Embedded Controls Developer is a valuable tool to accelerate the embedded development process. It speeds fixed point operations, on-chip peripheral usage, motion control applications, industrial closed loop control, and digital power. For the next step, we suggest you visit our website and either go exactly to this URL here, vissim.com slash vissim underscore download, or you can simply go to vissim.com and through the menu structure, you'll see downloads and then VizSim software. And you can download a trial copy of the software I've just shown you, and it will work for two months. And you can play with every aspect of it you like, send any questions to our online tech staff, and you too can quickly be up and running and enjoying uh, very fast digital power and uh, digital motor control application development. Thank you and have a good day.